In this video, I want to take you through how to view feedback if your instructor is using a rubric on your discussion board posts, as well as rubric feedback on your projects in MA215. Let's start by taking a look at where to find the rubric for the discussion board and for projects. So if I go to the discussion board, I have two ungraded forums. These are just for questions for your professor or questions about the unit projects that you're hoping other students will help you with. I'm going to go ahead and click on Participation 1. Now notice the question says, see instructions in the Week 1 folder. I'm not going to worry about that because this is not about getting the right answer. This is about finding the rubric. So again, this is a post-first discussion. You have to post before you see anyone else's. But again, before I post, I can click down here on Grading Information and then click on this little rectangle that says View Rubric, and it's going to bring up exactly what I need to do in order to maximize my, my points for the forum. For the first four points, I'm looking at Excel. Did I include a screenshot of my work in Excel or not? And in addition to that, would someone viewing my work be able to tell how I found the result in Excel as opposed to just putting my work in Excel and being done? I also am looking for an explanation. Did you explain what the solution means? Um, why is it meaningful, etc.? So don't just give me work in Excel, but tell me exactly what it is that you found and what it means. And then of course the second post content is furthering the mathematical conversation with your classmates. So there's a total of 10 points, 4, 4, and 2. That's for the discussion. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go ahead and create a thread so that we have something to grade. And it doesn't matter what you call it. I'm going to go ahead and attach, uh, pardon that, I'm going to attach a picture because that's what you're supposed to do for forum um, questions. And notice I've attached something ridiculous and said, I don't know what I'm doing, just for fun. And then I'm going to go to the project so that we can see exactly where you can find the rubric for the project as well. So on this one, it's a little bit easier. I click on the project and then I look at view rubric. Same idea. It's going to tell me for each question, how am I going to get zero points? How am I going to get the maximum points? So that this is particularly for project one. So that's how I can see that rubric. And then I'm going to go ahead and again, include my project file and submit it. So that's on the student side. Um, before I switch over to the instructor view, I do want to point out to you that this preview is not going to look good ever. So don't worry about it. If something looks different on the preview than it looked when you created it, I wouldn't be concerned about it at all. Your instructor, whether it's myself or another instructor, will download your file to grade it. So don't worry about what's here. Only worry about if the project file that you submitted is correct. So I'm going to exit that preview and I'm going to keep all of that data so that I can show you what it looks like on my end. So now if I go back to my grading, and obviously there's only going to be two things that need grading. So for my participation one, that is the forum. And as I can see, this is very, very small, but um, I will look at it first in your actual forum, so don't worry about that. But again, when I grade this, I'm going to look here and I'm going to open up your rubric. So I can either open it this way or this way. Typically, I open it this way. So again, yes, there's a screenshot of Excel, but there's very little shown on how anything was done. And there is zero explanation on what the solution means. And there is no second post. So typically then I would leave a little bit further feedback, like view the video. Ooh, let's try again. View the video on frequency distributions for help. 
and I'm going to save. So as I can see, and I can do the descriptions here as well, as I can see that I did not score very well on that particular assignment. Um, then I will go take a look at the project. And again, the project I would download. And when I download, I can see that I actually didn't do any of the project. So this is that project. Nothing's done on any of those questions. So obviously I'm going to earn a zero. But again, I would grade using the rubric. So missing, missing, let's say I did the histogram, but um, maybe I am missing axis labels. And then I get a zero on everything else. So again, this is automatically calculating my score, which is a miserable three. Hopefully you earn more than that, but I'm going to go ahead and submit. And then I'm going to go back to student preview so that you can see what it looks like on your end. So if you then go to grades, I can see that I've been graded on both and I can look at view rubric and I can see exactly why I earned only two of the points and note here, I can see feedback from the instructor. Um, I do want to point out that it might be, I'm going to go ahead and exit this for just a moment. It might be that your instructor chooses not to use the rubric. So if I'm going to go to, let's go back to this one. Perhaps your instructor will leave feedback here. Um, um, you had only one post and you weren't quite right, blah, blah, blah. Make sure that you, you know, look at other people's posts and make corrections, et cetera, et cetera. So if I do that, and then I go back to the student preview, I want you to just see how that feedback might look a little bit different. Notice here, there's now a little conversation bubble where there used to not be a conversation bubble. And that is the, notes that I left. So you might see feedback here, or you might see feedback over here. So hopefully that helps you to understand exactly how you can maximize your points and to see that feedback. So maximize by looking at the rubric before you submit anything, and then see feedback once you are done.